<laughs> All right, I'll, I'll start. Um, I think uh, a large part of thinking about CS for All, and I really do think of all in capital letters, is at least giving all students an opportunity for exposure to computing, to understand what some of the principles are, to get some of the basic ideas. And then from there, you will have some students who will want to go on into careers in IT or software development or whatever the case may be. There will be other students who will go on into other kinds of careers, some of which they'll end up using computing. So these days, if you're a mechanic or a machinist, you need to understand computers. The other day, I was at the dentist who was molding a crown. The entire thing was done with computational artifacts. And actually, the first time you did it, it didn't work out very well because understanding what the computer was trying to do was something you actually needed to have knowledge of. Um, and so lots of different professions in different ways will benefit from this. So it's not just about producing the IT workers, but all students need to have some exposure to it. And I'll just throw out one statistic. One thing we found at Stanford, we did a little survey of 2,500 students, and 64% of the women who'd taken at least one computer science class said had they been exposed to computing earlier, they would have more strongly considered a computer science major. And that's half the workforce. So if you think about the numbers being that high to engage a next generation of students, if we can actually provide some level of exposure for all students, I think it'll have tremendous benefit. I, I would say that uh, industry needs uh, people who understand the world around them and how it operates. Uh, we have traditionally taught the basic sciences like chemistry and physics and biology. Uh, and some basic understanding of that is important to be able to live in the real world. Uh, but computer science, and a new science, has a, probably a greater impact on the lives and the jobs of people than the basic sciences. Uh, information technology is transforming the world. Uh, we went from an agricultural society to a manufacturing uh, industrial society with the Industrial Revolution, now we're going through the Information Revolution. Computer science is penetrating every field. No matter what you study in the university, uh, you, are going, you will use computers. No matter what your job is in life, you're going to be able, you're going to have to understand the basics of computing. And we need, the ed education systems have a lot of inertia. They don't change quickly. And this revolution has happened in an extremely short period of time. When I was born, there were no electronic computers. If you looked up computer in the dictionary, it was a job description. It was somebody who worked in the back office of a bank with spreadsheets and a calculator, an adding machine, and a pencil. Uh, <laughs> uh, today, uh, everything we touch is influenced by computing. And so what industry needs is people who understand the world around them, how it operates, so they can do things and make things happen. And without a basic understanding of all the sciences, but probably I would advocate computer science more than any of them, uh, they're not going to be su uh, successful in their lives. Yeah, to uh, Dave's point, because I see it in a lot of kids. They're like, well, I don't want to code all day, so I'll, I'll not worry about that. I'll go you know, do something else. It's such an enabler. It is everywhere. You, know, you want to be uh, in the arts. You're using this to, to progress that. You want to be in different technology fields, in chemistry, in science. You know, go splicing DNA. You, you need these skills. You need these skills, and I think they we, we, we miss something or it's not connecting is how we're, we're talking to kids right now that this is an enabler to help you, not a penalty box that you're, you're going in, uh, in a uh, class in your junior high or high school schools. This will help you. And I think that, that's really key to, um, key to help get more folks engaged earlier, more kids engaged earlier, because I, I completely agree. We can't wait till folks are in college and then be introducing to this, introducing CS to folks, this ship has sailed at that point. If I could add, I mean, I think there's, there's two very specific um, points over here which are very interesting, building on what Maron, Dave, and Patty uh, said. Uh, there's, a, there's a fantastic quote from, uh, uh, from Alpha Thompson, who's a board member at CST and a CS teacher himself, and he put it out in this very succinct tweet which says, we don't teach English to create more novelists. 
And it's, it's, it's the exact same thing out here is the reason for teaching computer science is not so that you have more developers. And I think that echoes what Pat said earlier. And, um, and, and the second part of that is computer science definitely is way beyond just coding. In fact, our point of view is uh, the, the deeper concepts of computational thinking are actually much more important because, again, not everyone is going to become a developer. And B, when it comes to coding, languages and, and syntax and structures, they come and they go. They evolve if you look over the history of, of computer programming, specifically over the last 50 years. You'll see every language has a life cycle. It'll come, it'll become hugely popular, and it'll go away. Um, so the, the bigger, longer-term value is actually trying to, to teach children what are the deeper concepts behind this, because that is stuff which will allow them to continue exploring this area and, and move well beyond just that I am a Java developer or you know, I am categorizing themselves by what skills they have rather than by what knowledge they own. Mm.